Hi, Gunner's Lowe's. Uh, last session, we uh, finished the fight with the Prince. Uh, didn't go super well, but didn't go super bad. A lot of people died despite us trying, but a lot of people didn't die. Man, you managed to interpretive dance his way uh, to peace while the rest of you guys just devastated them. And uh, that was enough for them to realize that what they were doing wasn't the smartest. And yeah. Oh, hey, Miriam. Hello. Hello there. So, yes, we interpreted danced our way to victory. And uh, we returned the prince to, uh, to the castle, while at the same time uh, we were notified that our village was probably going to be under attack. So, what? Uh, Again? <laughs> oh, no, this is the recap. Sorry. Oh, wait, I was like, I thought you were telling me what I missed. <laughs> no. Um, came in right at the recap. No. Um, so, yeah, uh, we came in. The village was probably going to be under attack. So Menu and Aerodava rushed off while the others uh, handled the, delivering the prince and the diplomatic situation regarding that. Um, yeah, uh, Manu helped out in the battle. Aerodava arrived a bit after, and with the prince, it was decided that he would be a envoy and basically join us to uh, join us for whatever we're doing. Uh, in this case, being like a diplomat. Um, yeah, so then we went forward. Uh, we found out that there was going to be a big call to arms against the fake emperor, fake high king, that was run by the Western Kingdom. Uh, well, no, that the Western Kingdom was joining. And yeah, the Western Kingdom was joining, and they also arrived to help us out. Uh, so we just decided, all right, let's go along. We're already friends with those guys. So we went along. We met a, uh, on the way, we met a Nyad, I think. Yeah. Um, and uh, then we got attacked by the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles in a sort of play fight. And that's where we left off. All right. And they were um, Bizon, not uh, Nyad. Try to use that regionally appropriate variation. What does that mean? Bizon was just the, it's just an Eastern name for the same, a similar concept of like nature based, beautiful woman singing songs, and in this case, turning into bees for some reason. It's not a very oh, yeah, I remember. Thing You don't want to yeah. turn into bees. Okay. So thanks for that. Um, so we got the uh, this kind of play fight going on here. I was going to ask if you guys wanted to kind of really play this out, like go uh, turn by turn in initiative, or if you just wanted to kind of montage it and describe uh, what your characters are doing and um, how you're handling this kind of situation. I'm fine with either. Uh, I'm fine with the montage. I don't think there's really a chance of failure here unless there is in which case that we shouldn't montage but like, hmm. if it's just a non-thread no. i don't know what's going on so <laughs> either one's You're attacking fine the big fire breathing dragon remember are we you are oh so there was the turtle dragon that was uh flying around and then there were these different teams of kappa, which are small turtle-like creatures with a sort of indenture into their head, like a bowl where they hold water. Uh, they seem to be balancing themselves very well to keep the water atop their head as they're kind of moving to engage you. Many of them are using non-lethal means and screaming out like, Red team will win. Orange team will win. Blue team will win. Purple team will win. And they appear to be a combination of ninjas, warriors, and shamans who are using a dirty tricks and other things to try to trip you guys up, um, like grapple you or otherwise like take you to the ground. Um, 
so far, none of you have succumbed to these effects. So why don't we start with uh, Aradavar here? What, uh, how do you play this out then as we montage it? Well, I said at the end of the last session that I wanted to steal something identifiable, like if they're Ninja Turtles trying to take their masks or their colored mm. bandanas, whatever they're using to signify the teams. And I wanted to take all of the red ones. Sure. You could try to do that. So, sorry. So I think you guys were attacked by the orange team first. And then the red team would come in a little bit later. But let's say that you do. So you kind of just like grab their bandanas off of them. You um, are taking away their 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 very identity. And what do you do once you've done this? Uh, just swing them around in one hand and dance gleefully. Okay. <laughs> they would probably sort of like a make a mock showing of them like losing their themselves and many of them like sort of like embarrassed to have lost their bandanas or their other identifying markers. Uh, it's if you were playing t tag football, you'd be uh, doing quite well. So then we'll go to Brad. How would you uh, handle this as the various Kappa try to? All right. Now, the last role we did was to disbelieve uh, uh, the dragon, right? Yeah. So Abshu will uh, keep moving around uh, um, at least 10 feet around and then take pot shots and uh, try to shatter the bowls they're carrying on their heads. All right. So um, the chanting and humming, that sounds like it might be part of the conjuring or illusion. Hmm. So um, you would notice that uh, the bowl is, is, it's a, it's not like a physical bowl on top of their head. It is actually, their head is shaped that way. Oh. Um, You're just shattering skulls. God, <laughs> stop him. <laughs> but oh, okay. It, it probably I mean, wouldn't be too hard to knock the water out of their head, uh, for example. Yeah, I'm trying to disrupt them. Okay. And I don't think I can choose to do non-lethal with my uh, attack. All right. Rock that head back. Yeah, so, okay. So um, whenever their their heads are, the water spills from their heads, they um, look like they are stunned or like almost like completely powerless, like a person who's suffocating or like can't do anything. You'll notice that like, as soon as you knock one, the water out of one of their heads, the, another one will come um, grab grab them, bring them over to the stream, and try to fill them back up. All but instantly, they will perhaps be trying to do the same to you or fire back at you. Does your armor have like a head-like portion? Or, um... um... Yeah. All right. So they might be trying in vain to attack the head as though it has any real meaning for you. Um, and uh, be maybe shocked that that's not very effective. Yeah, no, the eyes coming out of the uh, arms and uh, hands and mid body uh, are certainly no indication. Mm. All right. And then how about uh, for Vesper? Um. No one seems really concerned with the dragon turtle, so I guess I'll just try to keep away from it. And I will play fight with the... What is that picture, Nick? <laughs> I'll play That's fight the with the Japan turtles. Gatha. All right. Okay. <laughs> it's very interesting looking. That's how yep. they look yeah. nowadays. Anime says so. <laughs> 
<laughs> what if we made turtles sexy? <laughs> oh, <God>. Any... <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, I'm gonna play fight with them, and maybe I can use the vest of free movement to like dodge out of the way of their tricks and stuff. Sure, that will certainly help if they try to grapple you. Um, yeah. You guys gather maybe after fighting these guys for a while that they their definition of victory here is not that they have killed you or necessarily even incapacitated you, just that they have embarrassed you by some symbolic defeat, whether it's knocking to you the, you to the ground, pulling your pants down, getting you know like splashing your face with water or something. It's it's a variety of things that they're trying, but uh, you guys are all quite adept fi fighters. And while they have skills, they they are mostly mischievous fae, just trying to overwhelm you with numbers. Um, what about for Mania? Well, I'm going to do this thing that I can totally, absolutely, 100% do, because I am completely done with my dirty trick build, and it's all ready to go. 100% ready. So mind you, I think I was going to intimidate, but instead of that, I'm going to go through the entrance of the gen, over here to the north, uh, northwest. And out it's going to come blonde British, mind you. And he's going to be... Actually, what is the accent for the north? Are they just Brits? Um, it varies. You could do British, you could do Russian. Oh, a... blimey, mate. You're, you're coming into me suburbs and you it's not my British accent. It's that was terrible. Sorry. Anyway, this mind you, who's completely dedicated to dirty tricks, taking the scoundrel spear. It's all mapped out. I know exactly what it is. He's gonna beat them at their own game. He's gonna be going around. Everyone who provokes an AOO, bam, dirty trick to take your bandana or something, steal or take. I throw throw mud on your bandana. Hmm. Yeah, he's just going to be a goddamn menace. Uh, menace to society, nor, no good orphan. And he has a little familiar that his form has also been decided that's also going around, like, doing something that's also been completely decided. Yes. Okay. So you're trying to beat them at their own game? You're using a variety of dirty tricks on them. Uh, and he's really good at it, too, so definitely, right. probably. Sure. For um, the NPC's part here, since they're all kind of caught in the middle of this as well, um, it looks like pretty soon, or pretty quickly, King Colomir recognizes what's going on, and he kind of puts his sword away, and he just uses his shield to block or deflect their attacks, or just generally kind of has some fun with them. Um, they do manage to knock the crown off his head, though, which is considered to be uh, shameful enough to be a loss. For the others, though, um, many of them are kind of taking this as an opportunity to show off their skills, kind of display their combat prowess. You see that Sir Gwenya is certainly skilled with her um, halberd here, as she's sort of like wielding it and swinging it around um, quite dutifully. Sir John Kay, as well, is uh, kind of like bear hugging them like several at a time. And he sort of bellows out at one point saying, Green team will win. Which uh, causes some we're, confusion. We're green? <laughs> it's uh, at least the colors of the Western Kingdom are green usually in their flag. So most of the oh. <laughs> members of the Western Kingdom here have green. And um, yeah, through the combination of all your, your efforts, you're able to eventually cause the Kappa to um, admit defeat. Many of them will give you a, um, a slight bow here as they you know, admire your capability. And they just say, um, that was fun. Thank you. Um, You're welcome. British Mind You is going to go over to the king. Uh, the King Arthur stand in. Archer, I forget what his Calamere. name is. Calamere. Calamere, that one. 
and it's gonna say, "Hey, Gov. Uh, yeah, good to meet you. you. Might not have met me, but I'm here now. Um, so how about we get these little folk, we get them together, and we use them as part of the army. Use them as heroes, you know. Recruit them and stuff. Conscript them." Hmm. He looks to Sir Gwenya, and he says, uh, Oh, I think we've had enough Fey in our forces. And difficult to control, that lot. Just, just scoffs and walks off in a very moody, childish way. Um, he's going to try uh, to do it anyway. But don't let this succeed, Like I don't want this to succeed, but he's going to try. All right. I guess you just go over and be like, join us and just give them a speech. I don't want to take too much time on it, but it's going to try and forcibly conscript them with charisma. We assume that fails. Sorry, I don't see the check yet. I, I don't have a check. Can we just say it fails? I don't have a check yeah, done. That, sorry, I'm sorry. Right. I'm sorry. I he's just, a, he's a, he's thought a concept. you were going to do a check. No. Okay. It, well, I mean, they would just reiterate that this their place, this Hollow Wild Gorge home, streams good, fresh water, good trees, friendly folk, play lots of games. On travelers. Just scoff and go into a cave and bring back normal menu. Very moody. When you say we believe she's an elf, does that mean that it's up in the air about whether or not it's true? Well, she appears to be an elf for all intents and purposes, but I mean, you know, it's hard to tell. Maybe she's an Eladrin or, you know, a court fae of some kind. Like a, sometimes it's not incredibly obvious when you're an elf um, or similar, similar lineage, but you spend some time with her now and had some time to talk to her, so you probably would have an idea. She claims to be an elf, for what it's worth. Well, unless I have a reason to doubt her word, I just believe her. All right. She seems. Please explain to me in detail your exact race and background. That, <laughs> yeah. that, that really makes friends. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it's she's fairly open about it. Like, Sir John Kay might take some offense if you asked him about his background, although he would admit that he is half giant. Um, yeah, for the other, you, you're pretty sure Sir Galahana is a half elf, but beyond that, you're not exactly sure about the rest. I mean, Lady Anna Margarita looks human. Vesper's experiences that she's human. All right. So um, with that, the COPPA here will grant you passage through. They look forward to meeting you again. And uh, they will try to have some, some new tricks up their sleeves. The next time we defeat Aww. them. Bye. <laughs> I really like those guys. They're fun.
All right. So um, you guys have an opportunity to continue exploring here. There's many other caves, or to simply continue further to the east. Um. Mm. Oh, that real mine. So mine you would have would have fought them with his own way, right? In his perception. Mm. So sure. since he still beat them, I'm going to try one thing with this mind you who is completely different because he's more tan. Actually, no, he would look actually. Anyway. Um, uh, mind you would like to try and convince uh, these Kappa to tell us of a treasure that they have in their cave because we won and this is our reward or something. Like okay. if they have any great treasure hidden away. Sure. And try, try to convince them for that. Sure. You could make a diplomacy check. All right. Not my best. You should probably just try and scare them, but that's mean. So I'm just going to diplomatize. 31. Kappa will say, uh, Green Team won. Green Team can have treasure, but it is not ours to give. You must find it. Great treasure in these caves. Yes, yes, yes. Um, Manu would be trying to have this discussion in, uh, within view of, or within your range of both the party and the king. And just give him a look like, you think it's worth it? Are they mm -hmm. telling the truth? You can make a sense motor check. Are they good? Um, the Kappa are pretty neutral, you suspect. Does the king try as well? I included him because he's probably got pretty good or someone in his entourage has to have sense motive or he'd be dead. Right. Okay. So um hmm. the king will say uh I believe him for what it's worth. There probably is a treasure here, but though the Fae may be mischievous, they say it is not theirs to give. Perhaps it is guarded by another. Perhaps it is hidden away in some way that makes it difficult to find. In any case, I have no need for such worldly treasures. My army is well supplied. We should not waste too much time here, I think, and to continue on our way. Yeah, that sounds good. Um, Mr. King, could you do one thing for me, please? Yes? Maybe you or one of your friends could try and coax them about what the treasure is. Just maybe if it happened to be a mythical sword that's a set of one of 13 or 12 or so, then, well, you know, it might be worth for us maybe to go while your army travels. But other than that, you know, I, I, I agree, generally, yeah. So if you could try and find that out, or someone else, and then you looks around. Hmm. Well, um, sort of the king and the others will kind of look to them, and Merlion will step forward. He says, uh, very well, I volunteer. His tribute. No. Um, so he sort of moves up to the cap and he says, um, tell me what the nature of what treasure lies in this hollow wild gorge. Could it be treasures of men, treasures of beasts, or treasures of the mind and soul? Kappa speak back, they just say, um, 
Treasures of men, bright and shiny. Gold, silver, platinum. Large chests, oh yes. Great treasure left by someone. Some man. Merlin kind of turned back to Mainu and the others, kind of perplexed. Well, that was not what I was expecting. Oh, I know what this is. This is obviously the stash of the greatest spider. He doesn't want to carry all his stuff with him, so he leaves it all in the caves over here. This is where the armor answering devil one is. It's in this cave. That is 100% what it is. My new call nods confidently. Uh, can I make a bluff check to make this true? You can no. try to make a bluff check? Yeah. Isn't that how uh, Pageant of the Peacock works? It doesn't make things true. It just... By right. sheer coincidence, what you say happens to be true. So that's definitely what this is. That's what I did, and now it's true. All right. Merlin and then asks, immediately asks, is it true? Is there an arm of answering amongst the treasures of this cave? And the couple will say, uh, no answers that we know of, just questions. An arm of questioning. <laughs> that wouldn't be nearly as useful. <laughs> That's the next quest. Hmm. Gotta figure out question, how do we fix our huge fuck-ups? So, Murphy, or sorry, you were going to say something, John? I was going to say an arm of questioning would probably be far more valuable to us. Morlean will thank them and uh, say, I don't think there's any more that we're going to get from them on the subject. If there's no arm of answering, then perhaps we should just leave it be for now. We can come back later. Yeah, that's probably correct. But I would like to make a note that mind you 100% believes this now, that this is the stash of the greatest spider hmm. of all the people he killed. No, it wouldn't be the first time I got an ass pulled and it just happened to be right. Probably not this time. I'm not confident in this one, but wouldn't be the first time. All right. So you guys are then continuing forward along um, through the Hollow Wild Gorge and into the lands beyond. Yeah, unless there's a detour of some kind. All right. So there's no immediate detour here as you guys are kind of moving. You'll notice that the vegetation will change slowly as you begin to move up on the border, the formal border between Nantagu and the uh, Western realm uh, or the Western kingdom. As um, you guys get there, you'll sort of come to a bridge. Um, the stream here is the considered to be the natural border between Nantagu and the east. Crossing over the bridge and the stream, um, it'll be like any other bridge or stream that you've crossed. But as you see the delegation from the Western Kingdom begin to cross, they change, many assuming uh, forms more befitting of the region as they change. They don't seem aware of the transformation. It is as if they were always like this. Are we supposed to be on a different map? So I was going to do this one a bit differently. So No, I just wanted to make sure that we were aware of what's going on. Oh. Kalamir. Yep, is Kalamo. Um. God, I I really hope you don't draw too heavily into like the Eastern personalities, the stereotypical like old sage personalities with this one. That's the one way to make Merlin worse, make him an old I mean, master. Well, you don't know which character he was based on in the Eastern, the Romance of the Three Kingdoms, though. 
Yeah, I don't. I, I want to read it. I haven't yet. But I know a lot of the ones Wait. you like. Too fast, too fast, too fast, too fast. I think you Sorry. can close them. They're all being open, so they're... Oh, okay, they're okay, okay. Each other. Sorry. Okay, then fine. <laughs> Ooh. So their arms answering would be changing form as well, right? Um, more or less. They they mostly look the same as they were before. Um, calling is probably changes the most. Is his race changing or just his hair color? Um, mostly just the hair color. Some of them do change subtly. You'll notice that um, uh, Gwenya's skin turns a much darker shade of red. Uh, Manu will group everyone, grab everyone, and be like, um, you all see, you, you all see that, right? Yes, I do. Do, do, we do anything, or? Yes. Well, I think we're the only ones that won't change when we go over. Yeah, I was just going to ask, do it at why, will. why can we change at will, but they change based on which bridge they go over. We were at the Shattering. Yeah, we were at the Shattering. So that's true for everyone here, except technically Abishu, who would change oh, yeah. as he goes across the boundary. Oh my god. His tentacles changed colors. <laughs> I was going to say, I think maybe the stylization <laughs> of his armor would change. Hmm. But the whole Eldritch being ripped out of reality thing Probably leaves him messed up. All right. Um, does anybody else want to describe how their character might change? I mean, you do have an opportunity to do it, but it's would be your choice here if you wanted to change into a different form. Well, in my case, I'm from the East, so this would be my form. Right. Um. I think this is my new Eastern form. I don't know. I, I want to use his Eastern. I guess we could. Is my new Eastern? I forget. I think so. Yeah, I think because his parents were, right? So Yeah. He, he would so. be from here, so he's normal. Is... I'll, I'll change. Go ahead, John. Um, Did we experience this change when we went to the West? So, again, most of you didn't cross the border and immediately change your cells. Um, I wish you would have changed, but I for, think I forgot to mention it then. Um, and you weren't traveling with any other NPCs at the time. Um, Sir Berard was from the West, so he wouldn't have changed going to the Western Kingdom. Sir Berard was from the West, but his uh, faction was in the North? Yeah, so he was originally born in the West, and then he was uh, working for the Emperor in the North, when you first met him, um, there weren't many changes there between his armor and stuff, but there would be if he had gone East here with you guys. What is so significant about the East versus the West and the North? Um, different styles. So like, for example, in the North, he wouldn't have access to as much magic. So he used a physical shield while he was up North, um, rather than the energy shield that he is able to manifest here. Just for him, it's it's more of a, it's the same flavor, but less magic, more or less, when he's from his, in his northern form. For the east and west, the magic is the same, but his appearance is different, more or less. So um, otherwise, you guys are crossing through a kind of a gentle um, forest of bamboo. The countryside here is um, just kind of fair. It's a good day. As you guys are continuing to move, you would uh, be starting to come upon um, a village that is further here to the east. Um, you would be see that there's like soldiers um, camping out around the village, um, a force along the road that's like just checking people as they move by, making sure that, uh, you know, the 
they're aware of the travelers on the road, some of the soldiers might see you approaching and try to flag you down. And we're marching with like 10,000 guys. Yeah, that's right. Although they're behind your column. Um, yeah, but 10,000 guys, you don't hide in the forest. They're, they're behind yeah, you. They're exactly. clearly behind you. Yeah, yeah. They're probably exactly. behind you for several miles. Exactly. So they see all of this and they, you know, flag your group down. King Column here would be the first to respond. They say, uh, they bow and they say, um, um, Kalumo, you, Sonsuevo has been expecting you. Thank you for answering the call. Um, we have made the village available for you and your men to rest. Please um, come with us. And they kind of motion back towards the village and begin to escort him and sort of his group towards the village. You as well are available to move there if you like. Do you guys go with them? Do you want to engage in something else here? Or how do you want to handle this? Does Calamir have a, a squire or a herald? Um, not so, like, exactly. So he would have a herald here, um, but he would, because he's leading the army in this instance, he would um, be communicating with these men directly. It looks like yeah, Colomir doesn't have much ego about this stuff. He is perfectly willing to um, to engage in that. Okay, unless there's a protocol issue, I will try and run out in front and introduce everyone. All right. Yeah. They, they seem to know each other, so it really doesn't matter. Yeah. It looks like they recognized him by his appearance, but um, or the appearance of him and the army. I mean, they were expecting an army to come from the west, and they saw one, and yeah. So, great. So as um, they are leading you all through the village, they show um, Colomir and his people to a house. They Look at all of you though and they're, they're kind of unsure exactly what to do with you but they um the soldiers sort of after talking amongst themselves decide to lead you to the hetman's house hetman being essentially like the mayor of the village i was just gonna ask that that sounded like a new term what is it what does that mean other than obviously mayor um so hetman is like a it's like a military officer. Um, it's roughly like it's less than general, higher than like lieutenant. Um, so it's usually like a, the second or third highest military commander. Um, but in this case, the, the headman of the village would also be the one running the village. Sorry, I muted because I'm eating breakfast. <laughs> um, I think it's simple if they're just the same for now. Sure. Yeah. Let me. I know I had this set up. So are they? Are they separating us from like the main meeting thing? Well, it looks like they are bringing you out here. Um. To, because they're not sure exactly what to do with you immediately, but you are being led to the leadership. So, um, so I don't think you're being excluded from anything here exactly. All right. As long as, yeah, I don't really care where they put me as long as we're in the proceedings. All right. Sorry. 
is this village under military occupation or does it have its own uh, government? So it looks like the village does have its own government. It's fairly small though. So the government mostly consists of just like a small council of elders that oversee the operations of the village that Hetman um, is you know, nominally in control. You know that in the East, um, it's much more militarized than the other kingdoms. So um, the general structure of government tends to follow a military structure. Okay, and the border for the east and the north, is that river just to the north of us? Essentially, yes. So the that's the river that separates the province that you're in, um, Jinzhou, from the, the, the heartlands to the north. But um, Is the heartland if you want to get, all one piece, or is it also subdivided? So it's also subdivided. So let me, uh, while you're on this map, I'll just make it clear. So um, the heartland is usually divided into two provinces. So there's the Eastern heartlands and the Western heartlands. So these two provinces are considered, you know, together to be known as the heartlands and the ones that are form really the core of the Northern Kingdom. The um, capital city of the North is kind of its own province unto itself, both it and the territories to the north of it in the um, frozen seas. So um, those three provinces are the current provinces that are considered under the control of the north um, and are the quote unquote northern kingdom that we've been referring to. Um, now, the northern kingdom also lays claim to a lot of the, the frozen provinces um, elsewhere in the north, but most of those are actually controlled by the different Dwarven kingdoms um, or other barbarian tribes that don't acknowledge the rule of the empress and the power of the northern kingdom. So that's part of why the Lord Alduin is so important here is that sort of he represents a, a key towards potential unification or aid with all that. Now it turns out that uh, there's Yuan Shu, uh, also a dwarf, had helped to take control of the eastern kingdom here. And so the two provinces that are sort of the key uh, to the Eastern Kingdom. Oh, sorry, the the river here is sometimes considered the border and this forest here is sometimes considered the border. So everything between that forest and this river is contested territory actually for the province. But um, but yeah, this is all classically considered part of um, Jianling. And then over on the other side of the wall and the natural mountains here, is the territory of shuffles paper quickly Yanzhou. So Yanzhou is the um, which is normally the capital of the east, but the Eastern Kingdom also claims the Darklands that is slightly to the north, as well as the um, state of wild rice um, to the southeast. Um, this jungle terrain over here, neither of which are formally part of the Eastern Kingdom right now, but classically they have been a part or been claimed by the Eastern Kingdom for over the centuries. Is the jungle populated? It is, not with humanoid races though, for the most part. It's mostly various monstrous races. Um, it's considered a pretty dangerous place. And um, according to various legends, it has never been completely pacified. Okay, so claiming that really means nothing. There's no tax base there. Yeah, there's no tax base, but I mean, in some sense, it's like there's a lot of weird creatures and magic and other things of different values. Uh, there's a lot of ancient ruins and such, but not a ton of people. Yeah. And in the area that is between the river and the forest, who currently controls that area? So currently that area... Um, was is controlled by um, Yuan Shu here, but that was before Sun Suibo took the city of Jianling. So when Sun Suibo took the city, um, he sort of cut off a lot of the control that Yuan Shu had over this territory. And so as the Northern army marched through here, they basically just took it back all over for themselves. So this is now, though it's contested generally, it's now basically in control of the North. 
okay, that's basically what I wanted to know is who's collecting the taxes for that area because the guy who's getting the money is the guy who's running the show. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they just did this recently, so. It, it was... Do we know anything about Sabo's plan for that territory? Is he interested in reconquering it, or is he just interested in taking the true east? It sounds like he's just interested in taking the true east. Um, okay, because I was going to say that we might want to start our faction up there where we have a river as a defense line and take that little triangle up there. That way, if things go south, we got somewhere to retreat to. Hmm. I'm not the military advisor. I was just curious what their plan is and um, so that I can formulate mine based on it. Right. Well... One thing that you gather in your, you know, being able to talk to um, Colomir and the Western delegation is that this is going to be a broad coalition in opposition to Yuan Shu. And one of the first, um, one of the, the first tasks once you all arrive is to begin a war council to discuss the strategy and general, like, concerns and, uh, goals for the coalition stupid question but uh sabo is uh, aligned with the north right so cutting that off is actually helping his side so sabo is just at this point he's just anti um the false emperor yuan shu so his opposition to the emperor is kind of what catalyzed all of this the because he took this city, it created an opportunity for the North to take that territory, and the North is more than willing to help him defeat Yuan Shu completely. Um, that's really only to their benefit. Uh, what is the political outcome when we uh, dethrone the false emperor? So what you would have after that is you have the um, all of the factions. So the Sonsuevo's faction, the Northern and the Western factions would all recognize the empress in the north as the one true empress of the entire like continent and they would uh be like nominally willing to essentially like hold or share power over their respective regions so it would be hopefully a stabilizing force that would help because there are many provinces like the state of wild rice or the darklands or the mountains to the far north which are still more or less not in anyone's control and you know are would need to be pacified at one point or another okay and the west is already on board with this because calamir is the king of the west right yeah that's right okay so we just need to crush this one faction to basically bring about reunification so it would bring about peace reunification is a bit more of a complex issue because for example if the though the three kingdoms would recognize the empress as the one true empress what if the empress like tells them that she's going to reunify the country and that they need to step down from power right um that obviously complicates it a little bit because they probably wouldn't step down from power uh, especially if they didn't believe that was a genuine command from the empress uh, which some of them have reason to believe so it, this is a, a bit complicated and we'll get into it. But yeah, it's functionally, they're each independent governments that agree on the general scope of reunifying the empire, but they disagree on exactly how to go about doing that. So once they have defeated their number one foe in Yuan Shu, then there will be many questions about exactly how to go about this reunification process. Okay, I just wanted to clarify before we move forward so I knew what I was talking about. Sure. I have a couple questions quickly. Um, So the dwarf, the other dwarf king who is, is he with us? So Lord Alborn would be traveling with you guys here, yes. All right, and did, did um, did he switch into a eastern form? So he would not, um, purely based on the Thing that he was essentially present like he was in the same region that you guys were in at the time of the shattering so like you he doesn't change automatically as he moves to different regions all right so i guess he's probably pretty freaked out about that too did we lose abju yeah sorry let me grab him 